Welcome to another Smart Retail video. In this video, we're gonna go through the Smart Grid component of Smart Retail. We to call any grid in Smart Retail that displays information, like in item maintenance, as you can see here, as a Smart Grid. We call them Smart Grids because they offer a lot of functionality and a lot of flexibility in the way that you can further customize Smart Retail to suit your own needs. Here we are in Smart Retail in the item maintenance menu. I'm gonna be covering all of this content in item maintenance because mostly this is where users spend most of their time. But these concepts and these features work in any grid in Smart Retail. So all I've done is I've opened up item maintenance. If we go into the menu and type in item maintenance, the first thing that you can do in this grid is reorder any of these columns into the format or the order that you you need. For example, we can move order code over here. We can move order code to the start of the grid. We can move supplier code onto the right of the supplier name. We can also resize the grid columns. If you select or move your mouse over the column splitter, you get a different icon and as you drag to the right or you drag to the left you can add more or less width to the column as you resize the data automatically tries to fit in the space left and as you can see as i provide more width to the description column we no longer wrap the data so we can display more product information but as you can see I've left less room for the supplier name, so I have to give it some more to fit that in. Anything or any data value that can't be displayed in the width is automatically wrapped. If you open up the column chooser, you'll get a list of columns that are available to this grid itself. You can see these are columns that are related to item maintenance. But if we were to close this and open up offer maintenance, it also uses the smart grid. The column chooser here shows columns that are specific to offers. So by opening up the column chooser, these are all of the columns that are available in alphabetical order to this grid. Um, if you do not want a column, you can just drag the column into the, into the column chooser and it removes itself from the grid. So as you start removing columns, you can see there's more room on the grid for other columns to be displayed. So for example, we might want to include the active flag. We might want to include the average weekly sales. We also want to include the current carton cost, um, current GP, current cell, and as you see, as I add more columns to the grid, there's less room for additional columns. So you have to be conscious of what information you want to display. When you finish with the column choosers, close it with the X, and then you can move columns still as you see fit. As I added those columns, there's no data in them. To get that data to refresh, you can either just change one of the sort orders and that automatically puts the data into the grid or you can press the alt r shortcut once the grid is set the way you'd like it you can change the sort order of any of the columns as you click on a column header you'll notice the sort icon changes this icon indicates that the grid is sorted descending and this icon indicates that the grid is sorting ascending that makes more sense in the item maintenance. Ascending is obviously anything to do with the letters A to Z and descending is Z through to A. To save the layout, you hit the drop down arrow next to the column chooser and choose the option to save layout. You can give it a name, say for example, default, because I'm gonna use this as my default layout and press enter and that will save that layout. It's important to realize now that once that layout saved, every time I open up item maintenance, that layout would automatically be applied without me having to select it. As you can see, there's only one layout saved here, but I can have any number of layouts saved. For example, if I open up the column chooser, I can scroll down and find normal cost. It's in alphabetical order.
normal cell and normal GP as well as I could also include the last sold date and when the product was last modified. I can then reposition columns as I see fit again. Again, I'll Alt R to refresh the data in the grid. That brings my data back and then I can save my layout. Because I already have a layout applied, it's asking me do I want to overwrite or create a new layout? I'll hit create new and I'll call this my normal cell and cost layout. So now you can see I've got multiple layouts and what I can do is just select which one I want and it will open up that layout for me. The system will always remember the last used grid. So if I close item maintenance, for example, and then open item maintenance back, it's opened up that last applied layout for that grid. Within organize layout here, you can also tell it to specify which layout you want to be default other than using the last applied layout just by clicking this star. If you want to remove the layout because you no longer need it, you just hit the delete button and it will remove that layout from the system. If you've made some mistakes with the layout, so for example, you've made things a bit too small and you can't get them back, you can always reset the layout by choosing reset layout from that menu and not saving those changes. And again, reset layout and it moves it back to the original default settings for that grid. So let's just change back to my normal cell and cost layout. Next, I want to show you how to search for information in one of these smart grids. Any of these grids have this search row up the top of the grid. Here you can just type in any information matching the data in that grid and it will filter the grids for you to find that information. For example, I can type in coca here in the description and it should find all my products with coca. You'll notice here that it's also searching for products that have coca anywhere in the description, not just in the start of the description. If I want to search for the start of the description, I use the caret symbol, which is shift, shift number six, and then I can type in Coca-Cola here, and now it will find anything with starting for Coca-Cola. So let's just go back to Coca. I can also do what's known as a compound search. For example, I can do anything in with Coca-Cola that is in family 01231 and it will find anything with both of those search criteria. Likewise, I can also include the active flag and it will only filter those, those products. If we remove these filters now, we can also use the wildcard, which is the percent symbol. For example, I can type in J West percent 95 grams. And this will find me anything with John West and 95 grams with anything in the middle. So that's how you find those, those types of products. As you're searching, there's a couple of keyboard shortcuts to be aware of. I'll go back to the trusty Coca-Cola. Once you have typed in something and the grid's refreshed, you can use the arrow keys to arrow down to go straight into the grid. If you find a product that you want to enter, you can just press the enter key. There's another keyboard shortcut, escape, that will close the grid and take you back to the original search. If you want to get back to this search, there's another keyboard shortcut, which is Alt S, and that will return you to the original search. Maybe you want to search for something else. So this search bar allows you to search for any data in the current grid. You've also got this option up the top here called a filter. What this will allow you to do is allow you to search for using any of the columns that are available to the grid. So for example, I can click on the search. I can search for active is true and 
my department name contains fruit and press apply. This will then show me all products that are in my fruit and veg department, for example. Let's remove this modified date. And you can see there are my fruit and veg products sorted by description. For example, I might not want to include stuff that I haven't sold before. So we can again click on the filter, hit the plus, add another column. Last sold. And we can say is greater than the first or the eighth. What's the first? Apply. So now this will only show me products that have actually been sold. It's very common to want to save these filters. So while you're in the filter, if you do want to remember this filter, you can hit save for reuse and then use a name. Now this filter will be saved and every time I want to access it, I can just access it from the menu. You also have a reset filter, which will clear the filter from the grid completely. So now this is all products or you can select any filter from the grid and it'll apply and only show those products matching the filter. You can also organize your filters by going into the organize filter option. Here, these are your filters. You'll notice that there's only one in the list, but when you select the options, there is a number of filters available. Within Smart Retail, any other user that's saved a filter can share that filter for anybody else to use. So these filters have been created by somebody else that's also a user in Smart Retail. You can go into Organize Filter and access those from within the Share Filter. From here, you're not allowed to edit these shared filters because they are owned by somebody else. But if you do want a copy of them, you can actually select it, go Duplicate. You can modify then the filter if you want and then give it a new name save so now that becomes your own filter so from here you can share filters you can set it to be your default filter so every time you come into item maintenance it will automatically apply that filter without you having to select it you can then delete them as well and edit them if you do need to make any changes One of the great productivity tips for Smart Retail is to use those default filters and use those default column layouts in unison with setting up home pages. For example, if I always want to see my normal cell information, I can apply that as my default layout. So let's do that. Normal cell and normal cost. So now that is my default layout. And what I also want to do is I also only want to view fruit and veg products so I can organize my favorite and I can make that my default layout. In one of the previous videos, we spoke about using home pages. So if I go into my accounts and look at preferences, my home pages are set. What that will do is when I log off and log back in, it's automatically going to open up Smart Retail. It's automatically going to open up my item maintenance. It's also going to automatically apply my column layout and my filter. So as soon as I log into Smart Retail, the first thing I have to do is start doing my work and not applying column layouts and favorites. Once a filter has been applied and once a column layer has been applied, there's also this option here to export to Excel. So once a filter is applied, we can choose this option, export to Excel, all records. What that will do is it will create an Excel file with exactly this information that you see in the grid with exactly these products. This is a great tip for wanting to export this type of information to suppliers for their own price books or even for customers. Additionally, you can select individual records. For example, I can hold down the one record, press the shift key, and select another record it will highlight all the rows 
between those two selections and then from the option here, option to Excel, select it. And that will export just the selected records to Excel. Additionally, you can also export individual selected records. So if you hold down the mouse, it'll bring up this selection box. And here you can actually select the records that you want to export and then choose the option to export selected records. And that will only export the selected records. Hold down the mouse again, left key, and then it will remove that selection box. As mentioned, this smart grid is used everywhere in smart retail. So for example, if we open up a product, you can see these smart grids everywhere. That same functionality which we just spoke about is available in any of these grids also. So here you have your column layout. If you don't want, for example, certain fields in your layout, you can remove them from the grid. Maybe you're not interested in XGST information. Again, if you want to use that layout, save that as a layout and give it a name. You can also see this in the sales grid. Here we have the sales for an item. Again, the use of the smart grid, the search bar. And here we have our options to export to Excel, filter and our column chooser. Maybe you want to see the average cost of the item, but not the XGST. And again, save that as a layout. I think this is where we'll stop this video. I do invite you to, as you start to become familiar with Smart Retail, to start exploring the column chooser and the filter. And as you do become familiar, start to really customize the way certain parts of the product look um, and start to take full advantage of how to customize it for your individual needs.